to do that. All right, we're ready to go. I don't show any audio connected from Rob. I don't know. Um, I feel like I should see a microphone symbol. So we can't hear you yet. I think you've got to tell Zoom to connect to some kind of audio on your end. Check one, two, can you hear us? Yes. Hey, cool. Hi, Phil, this is Tycho. Hey, how's it going? Good, man. I'm glad uh, we're, we got our technology figured out. I'm a real computer scientist. <laughs> So is Rob there with you or is he connected somewhere else? I'm right here. Oh, awesome. All right, um, can you see the uh, slides that I'm sharing? Uh, yes. All right, okay, um, can you start the meeting? Yeah, go right ahead. All right, thank you. Uh, so my name is uh, Ram Kumar Chinchani. I'm at uh, Cisco Systems. I work in the group. My colleagues are Serge, uh, Tycho, Ravi, and Mike. So um, today I'm going to talk about Zot. Um, that's what we are calling it. Um, it's a it's a it's a project uh, which is basically a reference implementation of the um, OCI distribution spec. Uh, so how did we get on this? Uh, this particular project. Um, so we were trying to build our uh, Kubernetes environment um, on OCI and the uh, CNCF community standards. So based on our investigation and we were looking around, um, so in terms of the OCI runtime, we we found Run C and a bunch of others, but uh, that seems to be a popular one. Um, then we picked on uh, picked up on uh, Cryo, um, which is basically which basically implements the um, Kubernetes CRI on the northbound and the OCI runtime on the southbound. The part that was missing for us was the OCI standards-based image registry. Um, so as, we, as we were looking around, uh, so there was some work that is that's actually going on in terms of the distribution spec. So we started taking a look at it and we realized that um, it, it, it's still in the draft stage, I believe, and uh, there is no real implementation around it. Uh, so, uh, so we jumped right in and um, started an implementation around whatever the spec is at currently. So this is the uh, this is the sort of the background around this project. So, so why not our Docker registry? So Docker registry it's a, it's a it's a corporate project. So they have they have their own uh, agenda. They have their own roadmaps. Their own timeline. Um, it, it supports the uh, Docker image format, that's their first class citizen, and more recently they just added uh, the OCI image support, at least on the wire. The OCI distribution spec is um, not necessarily a first class citizen for them. And, the, in, and in terms of uh, laying out the images and layers, they use their uh, Docker repository layout, which is very different from the OCI um, image layout. So these are some, some, some gaps that we have seen. So in terms of the um, um, so so the OCI distribution spec itself. So is there a OCI standard for image registry? The OCI distribution spec is is probably the place to start. Uh, the OCI image support is a first class citizen on the wire. So that is OCI images is what all that spec talks about. Of course, there is some there are some, some things that they um, uh, some backward compatibility the Docker is maintained just because that is the dominant um, implementation. And preferably, um, the spec itself doesn't talk about the layout on, uh, on the, in the way the blobs and uh, uh, the images are stored, but the OCI image layout is probably the, the natural fit there. So when, the, um, when we started this project, the, some of the goals or the stated goals of the project was 
course, we'll start with a reference implementation of the distribution spec and see where it goes. And um, the larger goal being, yes, uh, just like, like we have a lot of container runtimes and the community and the customers are free to choose whatever runtime they um, see fit. We would like to offer um, this as an alternative implementation uh, for the Docker registry. When you say alternate, do you mean the, in other words, the Docker slash distrib uh, uh, registry, in other words, the distribution source code of reference implementation? That's correct. Okay. The Docker slash distribution, yes. So in terms of the features, um, so we, uh, the Zot conforms to the OCA distribution spec as, as, as much as we, uh, so basically that's, that's it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's really an implementation of the dossier distribution spec. So if there are gaps, it is gaps between the spec and the implementation. So this is what we are coding to. Um, the, we have done this implementation in Golang. Um, and as a result of this, it's a single binary and just, it's, it's simple to run. Um, the documentations are, it's, it's a self-documenting project. So we use Swagger for it. Um, so the binary itself presents its own uh, self-document. It presents its own documentation, mm. and we use the OC image layer to store the layers and images. Um, so this is not in the spec, but I think this is probably a, a, a good thing to have. And in terms of the, uh, in terms of security itself, we support TLS. Um, we support authentication using a mutual authentication or TLS and HTTP basic, which is both HTTP password, the local password and over the network for LDAP. Um, the binary itself doesn't need any special privileges to run. It's just a simple uh, executable. Um, I guess this get, got repeated in the, um, in the presentation. So in terms of the ecosystem, so where does this all fit in, in the very big picture? Um, so in terms of the registry as a server, uh, so we have Zot. On the client side, um, what our tools need to interact with Zot are, um, the, the secret sauce is obviously the container's image, container slash image, which gets uh, linked to various projects. So we have patched the containers dot image and hosted it at anu image. Um, it's at github.com slash anu slash image, which uh, uh, basically has client side support for Zot. So if you had say Scopeo and you link with Anubu image instead of containers image, you could do something like this. Uh, Scopeo copy Docker, uh, BusyDoc and Zot column, whatever the uh, server IP is. Similarly, mm, so that is if you want to interact with Zot directly. But you could also do this. You could say Scopeo copy Docker and OCI, which would lay it out as an OCI layout and we could host, host Zot on top of that layout. So it, would, it can start serving off uh, at the OCI layout itself. And um, so this is just the Zot and Scopeo, right? So this is just a tool that directly talks to Scopeo. But if you want to uh, make this a part of the Kubernetes ecosystem, we went the cryo route. So in cryo, you would do something, uh, this is the most significant change in cryo.com, which is change the default transport from docker colon slash slash to dot colon slash slash, plus the certificates and what are the other credential changes that you need to make. But this is the big, this is the big change that you need to do. So at this point, what happens is, um, the kubelet can talk to cryo um, over the CRI interface and cryo talks to Zot for images and cryo talks to run C for the um, container runtime. So this is, uh, this is the ecosystem. So I would like to present a small demo of the working code. Um, so let me see if I can So this is our project and, and 
that's that's where we are building it and uh, the, the project itself is set up to do all sorts of uh, build processing like the linting and things like that but um, so it's uh, it's driven off configuration files which we thought because the the number of configuration knobs are way too many so we thought probably just standardize on the configuration option so right now it's just the basic zord that is running no no security on it just as, as for the sake of the demo um what we are saying is uh, the storage is is at slash temp slash dot um uh, it's going to serve off port 8080 and there's some logging enabled uh, we try to keep the configuration options um as close to docker as possible because uh, at least the there is no uh, huge learning curve when uh, you should folks try to migrate to this so we we serve it off like that and we have so we have scopeo here and scopeo's uh, so we're building scopeo with gomo modules and the big change for scopeo is to replace the container dot image with an image so this is the sort of the secret sauce with which where this and we can do things like that which is um we are doing in secure because we didn't set up the search for it but so this is this is dot uh, barfing log various logs uh, so as you can see it starts with a get on v2 and um, it tries to uh, look up a particular blob doesn't find it it creates a blob upload um then it starts uploading the actual layers then finally pushes the manifest um with a particular tag and it's done um we don't have the cryo setup yet for this um but I, uh, but that should that should also work fairly easily now in terms of the storage itself we said that it would be at slash temp slash dot which is right there and we chosen to put this as a, a pure oci layout so if you did copy a copy oci colon something it would still work and uh, in terms of all the apis uh, the headers the urls um the return values things of that nature we have kept it as close to um, um the oci distribution spec as possible um one other thing is yeah this is running in a vm but if you if you wanted what the link was so let's take a look at the code we can get back on this. so basically uh, the idea was to show that um if you point your browser to this location um, the uh, the documentation is completely driven through swagger so you could look at the uh, the api spec uh, what type of request body you need to send what type of return values you need to get all of it directly from dot itself so you don't need to go look at uh, look elsewhere for it and the way we achieve that is something like this so the code itself documents everything in line uh, okay i know what the problem is sorry well, let's let's try something uh, i got the port wrong i think text 
Space browser is not. Let's see if this works. Nope. Okay. Um, it, it is working, except that I am trying to drive this as a text-based browser, which isn't doing so well. So, but but you can say that uh, because this, this is running off a of VM, so. Uh, so, but you can say that uh, it is getting the it is serving off the the documentation uh, like so. Um, so this is dot. Uh, I would have loved to show you the cryo interaction with it, but that is not set up correctly. Um, um, so this is this is this is where we are at. Now coming back to the presentation. So in terms of uh, roadmap, um, so uh, we I think the sense we are getting is um, the registry needs to be a little bit more than just storing blobs and layers, it needs to do things, for example, store the Helm charts and things of that nature with the different media types. Uh, so um, we are open to evolving this a, a certain way, um, which may uh, may be orthogonal to the disk spec itself. The disk spec may be dealing with only the image repository, but this is an implementation which can do other things as well. Mm, uh, one of the gaps, the few other gaps we are seeing is uh, Hello, Rob. Yes. Are, are you trying to show us your terminal, or did you want to switch back to your presentation? Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's my fault. Sorry. Uh, I switched back. You didn't. Sorry. Uh, my bad. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Do you see this? Yeah. Now we're following along. Yeah. Okay. So, sorry. Yeah. So um. Yeah. So let me repeat that. So um. The disk spec deals with images, blobs, things of that nature. But Zod being an implementation can do more things. Um, and like uh, uh, like I said, uh, there is some interest on storing things such as Helm charts, etc., in this registry. Because if you didn't do that, then you needed a place. You need a place to store Helm charts and things like that. Uh, uh, is it a separate file server? Is it something else? This seems to be a natural place to put them. Um, because this deals with uh, packages, images, and how deals with the the uh, uh, the entire life cycle of upgrades and downgrades and things of that nature. So the other gap that we see in the distribution spec, which is probably evolving right now, is the image signing and verification. Mm, um, Docker solves it in a certain way using uh, um, the JWS, I think. Um, we would like to integrate Zot with image scanning services for for example um, scan for viruses any malicious content and things like that we would like to put uh, multi tenancy access controls for zot uh, a per image or a per project uh, access controls one thing that's also coming up is richer queries for example we want to say um, who who uploaded this image or uh, does this image have this particular layer, uh, is this layer shared, uh, things of that nature. Zot itself is, a, right now, Zot itself is a single binary, single point of failure, so maybe a, a, a way to evolve this is to make it trusted, more reliable. And of course, we want to stay, uh, stay true to the distribution spec, so we want to follow along initially because um, uh, the disclaimer is we, we, we are not the authors of the distribution spec, we are just implementing it. Um, but at some point, we would like to contribute to it as well. Um, uh, one note for about Zot configuration options itself. You have things like today. You have things like you can control where it is stored. You can control the ports. You can control your TLS, the certificates, mutual auth. You can control HTTP password. You can control it. Uh, you can you can hook it up with LDAP. You can also do things such as um, I can deploy it in a write protected way, but world readable, um, so that you don't need credentials when you read it. Uh, Logging things of the nature. So that's that's uh, I think that's that's probably something worth repeating. Um, and finally, I can take any questions if you have any. What's so your What's your yeah. goal here? I mean, is it like, hey, this is cool. You can run this. Also, is it that this becomes the new reference implementation related to OCI distribution? Like what is what is your thought process and what you would because it's very cool right I mean it's like you've obviously got a lot of work done and then you're showing all the um, things that 
are implemented or put in the spec and you're showing the, the edges of the spec that we've been working on trying to fill, such as better search and eventing APIs and signing and all the things you mentioned. Um, and we're definitely looking for additional brain power to help evolve those thoughts. But what is, it, what is your goal with Zot? So the, the goal with Zot was just that. So that's basically we, we were looking for a, a, a reference implementation of, uh, of the OCI distribution spec. So that, that's our, that was our uh, original uh, goal. We didn't find any, so we implemented it. But like any other project, it's, it's open to evolution, right? So we are, we are willing to take feedback. We are willing to add features to it and things of that nature. And it's, uh, whether the community adopts it as a standard is not under our control. Uh, um, so it, it, we are just offering it up to the community and, it, it, and, and we are looking, I guess, for feedback. The, so the reason I ask is the, you know, if you look at the, generally speaking, obviously I don't want to speak for all. It's like generally speaking, a number of us, and so I represent Azure Container Registry and I see some others from Google and I'm not sure if I see anybody from AWS or others, but you know, generally speaking, we use Docker distribution as the base of our code base. And then we have it forked and we do our cloud specific implementations. And generally speaking, it's fairly well factored for that. And we you know, can grab upstream changes relatively easily, relatively, it's all relative, right? Um, and it's a way for us, it has a good factoring so that it allows the clouds to have their specific goodness or specific differences in it. Is, the, is your proposal, like as your aspirations that this would be the thing we would shift to? So if they're, for instance, if and when, or I'll just say when, I'm gonna be confident and say when we get a better search and eventing API that is in the spec, that we would implement it here and the various clouds and operators could grab this code and then shim in their specific details. I mean, is, is that kind of the picture you guys are thinking about? Uh, yes, I would say. Uh, but although uh, absolutely yes, okay. uh, yeah. Although uh, the distribution spec itself is a, is a is a community effort, so um, that 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 is a separate effort in terms of all the features that you're asking for. But in terms of Zot, yes, we would like to make this uh, the reference implementation for uh, the distribution spec and and and, and for deploying uh, uh, images from. So this is Ravi here uh, from Cisco as well. Uh, one of the things we are thinking about is contributing a test suite for the reference implementation for compliance and implement Zot against that test suite and prove compliance. And we could potentially offer the test suite to any other vendors that would want to implement the reference spec uh, to, um, to make sure that there is com uh, compatibility and compliance to the specification itself. When the specification evolves towards signing and uh, eventing, uh, that's where I, so, so far the spec is pretty straightforward for, for, from an implementation point of view uh, because it's directly HTTP uh, works as well as uh, the storage layout. We picked image layout of uh, OCI itself, so it's pretty straightforward for, from a uh, compatibility point of view. But when it comes to uh, signing or for that matter, eventing and few other uh, aspects, uh, that's when variance could creep in. So we would like to uh, standardized, whatever the community, uh, the, the, the spec implementation comes up with, we would like to implement first a, a solid test suite for it, um, extracting the test cases we actually wrote for Zot into a separate, potentially a separate project in itself, independent, and then make Zot compliant and we update as and when we see the reference, uh, the spec getting updated, we also lock in step update this test suite and the uh, implementation as such. That's how we want to keep this as close as possible to be the reference implementation for uh, the distribution stack as such. I mean, that, that would be really helpful. And, and John kind of put a thing in there that you know, Google has a different implementation. And I know that Quay has one as well. It's, you know, but it, it follows the spec. It's just for varied reasons, people have different codes. But the thing that constantly, so there's two, I see there's two opportunities. One, we're always looking for like, hey, how do I iterate on some ideas around the spec? Where can I instance um, a distribution example? 
and we point them to Docker distribution and it generally works. We've been able to iterate on the artifact stuff with it. Um, and this way you can play with it without asking you know, a cloud vendor to go change their code. Um, going forward, it would be nice to have you know, something that might be more clean or more associated with it. I, I don't know how to properly categorize it. But we, as we have been looking at things like search, the search API and the signing and even metadata, one of the conversations comes up is it's not as simple as just writing and getting people to agree to uh, a spec markdown change, but where is the ref implementation and where is the test suite to, to validate that the design works? To, to, the, to that effect, we would like to offer this uh, uh, for evaluation from uh, the rest of the members here and see if that this would make a candidate for it. And if you have any feedback or changes, we're very happy to implement that. Uh, into the uh, into the thing and donate this into the containers organization itself. Yeah, I, I think that would have to be a broader discussion. We actually don't have, um, well, we have myself and uh, maybe Derek and you know, but anyway, yeah, that would be a broader discussion with uh, the TOB and you know, proposal and that, and that sort of thing but um yeah, yeah um, definitely what we would, you know interesting what we would like to ask is at least take a look at it evaluate it from a code quality and implementation uh, perspective and if you have any feedback please file issues and we will be happy to address that sure yep um Here's an important question from John in the chat. What does the name mean? <laughs> Such. Uh, crazy. <laughs> so when we started the project, somebody said this is crazy to implement. And we just literally named it that in Dutch, I think. Actually, I think I did it. I, it was in response to uh, we couldn't come up with a name for it. I said this is crazy. And, Zod oh, so Zod is crazy in Dutch? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched Fifth Element for like the hundredth time the other night, and that all I could think of when I saw it was Zorb. Was, uh... <laughs> but it's, 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 it's eminently Googleable, so I figured that was a good. Yeah. It'd be easy to find. Eminently? That's the wrong thing. All right, so um, yeah, that, that was helpful to, to get the bigger picture of what what you folks are up to and what, what you're trying to achieve. Thanks for prompting some of those questions, Steve, because I think, you know, obviously naturally that's the next, next thing is just trying to understand where it fits in the scheme of everything else that, that providers and implementers are doing in this space. So um, I think there's some, food for thought there uh, for both the OCI, but in general, obviously, there's maybe some interested parties to look deeper uh, over the next little bit. Uh, but before I, I prematurely end it, is there anyone else with a, a burning question um, that would like I to? I have a, a question and a comment um, related to kind of the reference side for OCI. I think what we're, at least in prioritization, like what we're really looking for initially is validation from the client side. Um, because yes, there's a lot of, there's a lot of implementations of the distribution spec that aren't necessarily, they were implemented as the Docker spec, but support the distribution spec de facto through just the distribution spec being compatible with the Docker spec. Um, but the problem today is a lot of those registries are implementing both a subset and a superset of the distribution spec. So for example, a lot of registries have other endpoints that might not be part of the distribution spec. Um, and many implementations may not be implementing all the endpoints. So from a client perspective, it's really important to know um, that a registry is actually fully implementing the spec. Um, so for the perspective of distribution, like we want to be able to point at any given registry and say that, yes, this is a full implementation of the OCI spec. Any client that uh, any client that implements the OCI spec 
uh, should be able to use this registry just fine. So just in terms of like prioritization for like the reference implementation, that's kind of what we're looking at from uh, kind of that certification standpoint. So we can point at a registry and say, these registries themselves are uh, compatible with uh, OCI. In terms of like pushing specific implementations on the registry providers, like, yeah, that's a little bit harder. Uh, most of them are implementing the spec um, in some form. Um, and it's been kind of up to the different clients today going to each of those individual registries to say, hey, you're not fully implementing this, this part of the spec. Can you please implement it, you know, as uh, specified in distribution? Um, so having a reference implementation on the server side, uh, like it might not immediately help some of the, the providers, but uh, I think today, yeah, having something that you can easily spin up to test and, and validate is good. Uh, the, the open source Docker implementation of it, it should implement the spec, but it's not always uh, easy if you want to test uh, something that's very generic. Like as you said, like uh, some of the types in there, uh, there's some limitation on, on the types that it will support. Um, so I think that was the comment. And my question was around the dot stuff that you put in Scopio and Cryo. I, I'm just trying to understand why, why, that, why that is necessary in the first place. Uh, it, it, this, sorry, this is Tycho, um, also with Cisco. It's, it's not really necessary, right? It's just that uh, the distribution spec is still a draft. We don't want to step on any toes by saying, here's, you know, the, uh, so it's basically just a way for us to get something in so we can have our own space to play in um, without, but in principle, yes, I agree. It is not necessary. Yeah, I guess like, yeah, they, they put like Docker colon slash slash naming there, but really like you, it should work with any OCI registry today. So like, like if it doesn't work, yeah. then like the best way to just go to Scopion and say like, oh, well, this, there's a mismatch here with, with the distribution spec and like, yeah, they'll, they'll definitely take those changes. Um, we would do the same thing on container D, like if you're implementing the spec and you find like, hey, like the client isn't actually implementing the spec, like that's, that's one of the goals of, of Scopio and container D and Docker. They all want to implement the spec completely, right? So um, if this is just an implementation of the distribution spec, it shouldn't be necessary to even, for the client to ever even see dot, like, I guess that's what but, I was trying to but out. worth worth noting that at least the containers image like that those transports there the the OCI colon there is just just uh, is just local disk it's not it's not remote right so I mean that's or, that's on them on how they implemented it but as I said like even the Docker colon slash slash should should work yeah better. yeah it's just a Scopio command issue yeah. I was just curious if, if you found some limitation there, and like if you, if you found like that doesn't work, then like I know the no, of those no. projects would would want that to work. Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it's just uh, so so we can have, uh, you know, something clearly that w when we're uh, implementing things against it, it's it's our uh, the thing that we're worried about versus um, this other, yeah. The other code. Does that make sense? I'm not by following though. For the Scopeo command, though, what are you suggesting we would use for the? Uh... I think it's pointed yeah. that you should be able to Scopeo copy Docker colon slash slash the address colon port of the Zot implementation, and that should work. Yeah, I'm saying that should work, and if it doesn't work, then I know the Scopeo maintainers would want to make that work. I think the claim is it should. <laughs> Yeah, if if it's a if it's an implementation of the distribution spec, like that, that should work today. That's that's all I'm saying. That's, I was just curious if that wasn't working or or if you're just trying to experiment with something else. At least from our experience, it was not working. Um, uh, so there are some gaps. I don't I don't remember from the top of my head what those gaps are, but uh, it, it doesn't implement the spec as is. The the Docker registry. He's not talking about the Docker registry. He's talking about Scopio. So if Scopio is pending the right uh, 
And the question is, if you do, if you do copy or copy Docker colon dot address, yes. Will it work? Yeah, so when you do so copy or copy, uh, so if the, there is Docker client code in copy, that containers image has it, right? Mm -hmm. So we are not a Docker implementation. If it's a Docker spec implementation, it will work. We are an OCI spec implementation. So the question now is whether Docker pushed to that, a Docker client pushed to that would work or not. And I think there are gaps there. It shouldn't be, that's, that's all I'm saying. The, the, you want, the distribution spec is compatible with the, the Docker spec. So like, yeah, they, they if they haven't added something specific for the distribution spec on Scopio, uh, my guess is that they're gonna take that, they're just gonna alias it with, that, with the Docker colon slash slash. Yeah, and we we need to know exactly what you you know what the failure was. Was it because you were looking at an older version of Docker, or was it because you there's a bug in you know Docker distribution? Uh, we we can get back to you on that. We can get back to you on the specific failure. Okay, cool. Yeah, I was just curious if if, if you found some some difference there, like because it's really important for us on the distribution spec that there there aren't incompatibilities. So if you found something when implementing the server that you found to be incompatible, then like, yeah, you should come to the, you should either come to the distribution spec and say, hey, this is, you know, from a server perspective, it's really hard. We cannot make a client or we cannot support a client that was using Docker before from a server perspective, because that, that makes it really hard for servers. Servers, it's easy to update a server. It's, it's really hard to force every client to update. So that's why, the, distribution spec is geared toward being compatible uh, basically with existing clients. Um, so if you, if you found an incompatibility there in the protocol where you expect the client to work, but it, the, the server is not working, um, then you should go to the distribution spec and enumerate what that is. And if it's just that you're implementing the di distribution spec, but, but Scopio is not working, then you should go to the Scopio maintainers and say, hey, if you're not implementing this part of the spec and they'll, they will update it. Um, that's 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 more my point rather than trying to. It's just I just thought it was weird seeing that like dot colon slash slash in there. Okay. And yeah, as a, as a container D maintainer, like yeah, it would, it's we would expect container D to work against any distribution spec implementation. So if it, if it doesn't work, then yeah, we want to know about it. And you can come to me and I'll tell you whether or not we're wrong or you're wrong pretty quickly. Okay. Any other questions, feedback? So, I mean, the one thing that I would say is that, uh, you know, having a, you know, whatever happens with the implementation stuff as conversations go on, there's definitely an opportunity for you guys to help out with some of the things like uh, the search and eventing APIs and um, even a more got metadata catalog conversations started as well. Uh, Cause those are things that are missing from the spec and the reference implementation um, of any reference implementation that is uh, consistently implemented across clouds. Um, I'm trying to spend time today getting some of the artifact stuff updated from the feedback and and move the um, uh, search and eventing conversation from HackedMD to issues under issues or what, what do we say we're going to call them a requirements uh, heading under the distribution spec for us to start gathering requirements for a V2 API. Um, so we really welcome you guys' interest on contributing to that. I'll, like I said, hopefully I'll, I can send you the link to where it is now, but hopefully with any luck today, I'll get it moved over to the um, official OCI stuff. You'd have the site. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, any, anyone else? Any other comments, thoughts? All right, well, thanks uh, very much to the Zot team for presenting. Um, uh, just a comment for anyone and everyone else. Uh, we have nothing on next Wednesday's uh, agenda. And then 
definitely trying to hold to that, uh, you know, have something in by Friday or Monday at the latest. So if anyone has a topic, uh, make sure to, to put it in HackMD. Um, and then early next week, I'll, I'll either confirm or, or cancel uh, next Wednesday. And I will put this recording um, out on the OCI YouTube channel uh, within the next 24 hours and uh, send that out to the dev list as well. Uh, so thanks everyone. Have a good rest of your day and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thanks, Max.